Stan Jabalisco here, <clears throat> proprietor and operator of Amateur Radio Station. W1GV Whiskey One Golf Victor. I'd like to talk a little bit more about antenna efficiency in regards to the two antennas that I use on my trusty pickup, big number eight. One of them, the Yesu ATAS, automatic tuning antenna system and the other one my design which is a force fed 96 inch I was about to say 96 foot 96 inch whip resonant naturally as a quarter wavelength antenna on 28 megahertz when I when we talk about antenna efficiency we have to keep in mind two quantities one of them is called the radiation resistance which we can symbol as R sub R, that is a function of the physical length of an antenna's radiating element in space. It has nothing to do with anything else. A quarter wavelength in space represents a radiation resistance of about 37 ohms. A half wavelength, very, very high, theoretically infinity. As the length gets smaller and smaller from a half wavelength going down, what we end up with is a situation where the radiation resistance decreases until if you get to a length of zero. Theoretically, the radiation resistance is zero. That's a little bit of a, of a misnomer, this term, because it implies that the signal would get out more and more easily as the physical length of an antenna decreases, but in fact the exact opposite is the case. Loss resistance normally symbolized R sub L is simply a function of how much ohmic loss there is in the antenna's ground system. The, it, sometimes physical objects surrounding the antenna can affect the loss resistance. Then in addition there is feed line loss which in general gets worse as the standing wave ratio increases. The extent to which that gets worse, though, is dependent on a lot of things, and a lot of people often overestimate this feed line loss. Although it has to do with standing wave ratio, they think that any kind of standing wave ratio over one to one is going to cause all sorts of problems, but that's not really quite the case. There's a lot more to it than that. So, let's just, uh, I'm still learning how to use this thing. Let's just erase all this data here. Start with a new notepad, and I'll just give you an example of radiation resistance versus loss resistance. Now, once again, the efficiency of an antenna, when you have an antenna, its efficiency is equal to the radiation resistance divided by the sum of the radiation resistance plus, pardon me, plus the loss resistance. Aha! I think I've figured out what causes those artifacts. They occur when I squeeze the pen. <laughs> There's a little button on this pen that makes those artifacts come up. So I want to avoid squeezing the pen. I'm learning, you are learning, we're all learning. If you want to express the efficiency as a percentage, 
you would multiply this whole thing by 100. So for example, if we have a radiation resistance of 37 ohms, such as my quarter wavelength antenna has, that 96 inch whip has this radiation resistance on 28 megahertz because of its physical length in space. I noticed that there is an almost perfectly flat SWR on that line. So there's only one way that you can have an SWR of 1 to 1, and that is if you have a purely resistive impedance at the feed line that is no reactants. And then the value of the resistance that the antenna sees, or pardon me, that the feed line actually sees, has to equal the characteristic impedance of the line. Characteristic impedance generally symbolized like that. It has to equal 50 ohms in this case because that's the characteristic impedance of the 58U coaxial cable. So when I observe an SWR of 1 to 1, that means that that feed line is seeing a purely resistive load, no reactants, equal to its characteristic impedance, which is 50 ohms. Well, what that means then is that the radiation resistance plus the loss resistance has to equal 50, meaning that the loss resistance here in this case is equal to 13 ohms. We can do that in our head. 13 plus 37 equals 50. So the efficiency of this antenna, uh, in this case, is 100 times, now let me keep working on this, 100 times 37, the radiation resistance, divided by the sum of the radiation resistance and the loss resistance, which is 50. So it's 3700 over 50, and that turns out to be 74%. You can, do, you can do that problem on your handy-dandy calculator, 74%. Because I'm learning how to use this program, I'm going to launch the calculator and actually do that. 37 times 100 equals 3,700 divided by 50 equals 74 percent. So that's the efficiency of my antenna, the uh, 96 inch whip antenna on big number eight. I know that for a fact, except if, if, if there was a high SWR on the line, all bets are off. This formula, can, you cannot use this method because reactants is present in such a case and that just screws everything up really badly. So what I'm getting is 30 watts, which is my output, from the transmitter times 0.74. Let's try that again. Okay, 0.74. 22.2 or roughly 22 watts of power is actually getting radiated in space by that antenna. And this morning, driving down to Rapid City, the morning of the 30th of March, 2014, driving down to Rapid City to get this tablet PC that I'm making this video on, and a bunch of other appurtenances that go along with it, whatever the heck appurtenances means. What does that mean, anyway? I look it up.
Did I say it right? The right word. So that is it. We are getting 22, but with all that, I worked France twice. Uh, I, I know that because of the prefix F. I worked two F prefix stations driving down the highway, Interstate 90, between the lead South Dakota, my home, and Rapid City. One of those contacts was on 28 megahertz. The other one was on 24 megahertz, where the antenna's efficiency is considerably lower because of the shorter physical length in space at that frequency and because of the high SWR. It is nothing like 1 to 1. It's probably more like 10 to 1. But it's a short length of uh, transmission line, so it shouldn't cause a great deal of difficulty. With that, I will sign off. I have yammered at you long enough. Do you want to save changes to note one? Nope. I want to go back to the space station. Stan Gibalisco, W1GV Whiskey One. Golf, Victor, or Good Vibrations. Until next time, 73 and so long.